Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Investing and Trading Live. As always, my name is Josh Lilquist. Today it's Saturday, July 22nd. We did a market preview uh, yesterday morning on Friday, talked a little bit about some of the stocks that were moving this week, AMC, uh, sorry, Tw- uh, Tesla, Netflix, Roblox. Uh, we talked a little bit about Carvana, some of the big movers on the week. And uh, Friday evening or after market close, AMC had a rocket ship just completely soaring up about 60%. So we'll talk about that a little bit. I do have a special guest here with me today, Mr. Luke Young. We're going to talk about a little bit about AMC, what happened there, and some of his take on the markets. Might get into some options, uh, strategies, things you can do in the market, especially with the stock market, and be a lot more efficient with your capital. So uh, bringing in Luke to the show. Luke, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? It's good. I know we did a show, must have been about two weeks ago now, phenomenal show, and you were talking a little bit about... Do you remember the topic you were, you got into in that show that we last did? I think we were talking about like um, we brought up the futures market of novice gaps. Yeah, you're market right. Market gaps, and then we also talked about like sector rotation. Yep. Uh, and and capital allocation within retirement accounts. There you go. So a little bit of mixed bag futures market retirement accounts. Today I want you to kind of talk a little bit about option strategies. I know you do different types of strategies, but before we get into that. I just want to do a quick market recap, and we've been recapping the the major indexes on the on the in the market. Uh, S and P five hundred, which is the SPY, closing out the week at four fifty two eighteen. So it uh, it opened up on the day on Friday higher, as we had talked about yesterday, and just basically went straight down and closed pretty much at the low of of the day but it was actually right about, right around even on the day actually exactly even on the day so it did not do anything uh closing at 452.18 the diamonds which is the dow jones the etf ending the week at 352.14 a pretty positive week for the dow i believe it was uh yeah it looks like it was actually down on the day but a very positive week for the dow jones the nasdaq which is the qqq 375.63 closing out the week and actually gapping up just like everything else and going straight down and pretty much closing at the lows of the day. So that could, with all three of those doing that same thing, look for some more potential selling pressure next week. There's a lot of big earnings coming out. We talked about earnings yesterday with uh, some of the big household names coming out. And then also the, the, the weighting on some of the major stocks, Google, it was five different stocks that were being adjusted on their, their weighting in the market. So that will bring some major volatility in the week. I believe the Fed Chair Powell will be talking on Tuesday or Wednesday. Let's pull up Forex Factory and peek at that as we get into that. So there's going to be some some volatility in the week. So if you are trading and investing, whether it's short-term or long-term, Make sure you're protected and be aware of the news that's happening coming up this week, especially Monday. I believe that waiting is going to be changed prior to market open on Monday. So the funds, federal funds rate is on, uh, on, t- on Wednesday, so be very careful uh, trading around that. They are projected to go up a quarter of a percent. I believe it's 98% or yeah, 98% chance that they're going to do that. So we'll see if they do that. If they don't, let's let's see a big, big move on the market if they don't. So, but yeah, projected to be at 5.5% on that. And then check out uh, Powell's speech afterwards. That will move a lot of the market. So be very careful for Wednesday. So that being said, in the markets, there are different ways to protect your positions, get in with less capital, especially with the stock market. Now, Luke, you do a little bit of options trading. And you do different types of strategies, and there's not just one cookie cutter strategy with options. So, what what is like your favorite strategy with options? Because you talk to a lot of people, and they say, "Oh, I do puts and calls." Well, that's just a thing in the market. That's like buying long or selling short. So, what type of strategies are you applying to the market with options, and and why do you even use options rather than buying or selling the stock outright? Great question. So, I quite frankly keep my options pretty simple. So. I either am trading options, you know, like you said, and calls or puts to go long or short. 
but I also use options for kind of an insurance protection strategy. You know, so for example, you're mentioning that we have earnings coming up next week and I'm, I'm personally, I'm long Intel, I'm long the stock. So what I'm going to do on Monday or Tuesday, and I'm going to look at buying insurance just in case Intel reports horrible earnings and the stock drops 50% overnight, you're protected because you bought the insurance, uh, very little uh, cost cost on your dollars. I, I don't know what the word for, but capital required. And um, you, it pretty much saves your behind uh, if the catastrophic happens. Yeah, I like that because you think about insurance and people look at you like you have two heads when you talk about insurance portfolios because everybody insures their cars, their homes, their 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 sell themselves. But nobody understands or knows that you can even have the opportunity to pr- protect positions in the market, especially if that's like in a retirement account because people are just buying and hoping that things go up. And over time, it, it's a very, very slow moving strategy. If you look at anybody that has a 401k, I would say most people say, Boy, I, it's not what I expected it to be. I was told I'm gonna, I was gonna retire with billions of dollars, and that didn't happen. So there's ways to protect your portfolios. I like that Intel because it, you know, it's, lately it's been sent on the year actually up right around forty eight percent. So you don't want to just put give those earnings away, right? right. So. That's why it's important to protect protect your positions. And by the way, there's you know no recommendation on this show. We're just giving some insight on the markets. No buy or sell recommendations. It, it's sad we gotta tell people that, but this is for strictly entertainment purposes only. Um, what are some other strategies that you see you know people using in the market, or what are some diff- different ways you can be efficient with your capital with options? Uh, so another strategy a lot of people use. I know Josh, you do this. If you want to be a willing buyer on a stock and prices, you know, five dollars ahead of where you're willing to buy it. So let's say a stock is trading at ten dollars, you're willing to buy it at five. There's an option strategy you can use to collect the premium to wait to be filled on those shares. Um, a lot of people do this. It's called selling puts, and essentially, people will find good areas of of demand, like I said, where they're willing to buy, and you know, you can collect anywhere from 8 to 20% per year doing this strategy alone. Yeah, that strategy, I mean, you dictate that percent. It's, you know, it's not a guarantee, but when you have areas of demand as, as what you're talking about, and that's what we know, we, we, that's how we trade, we, you know, where we learn and stuff like that is supply and demand in the financial markets. But it's not just go sell a put for no reason. It's have an area, as Luke's talking about, where you are willing to buy it and get paid to wait. That's essentially what it is. And especially with that strategy too, you actually end up getting paid the premium, which means you're making money if the market's up, sideways, down slightly, and even close to your strike price. The only time you would lose money is if price is significantly lower of where your strike price is. And when that happens, you would just get put to shares. You're a willing buyer at that price anyways. You know, So if you were long the stock, you would have been down you know, the $5 you're waiting plus some. That the only time you lose in that strategy is if you know price goes over the strike. Yeah, I like that. I mean, let's say for example, you're at a strike price of let's just say ten dollars is where you would want. Where do you want to buy it anyway? And you got paid X amount of dollars. Well, you just lowered your cost basis too. So essentially, you got paid to wait and got it got into your. If it closes, and we're getting into some terminology here, which you know, obviously getting an education to understand that is where you need to start, but. To do that, to get paid to wait, and if you get put, if you get the stock or get assigned the stock where you wanted it anyways, you lowered your cost basis, and then you have a target after that. So it, it sounds complicated if you've never heard it, but yeah. it's, it's pretty easy if you have done it a few times or at least watched someone do it. Yep, exactly, and that's kind of what we talked about over the last few weeks. You know, I had mentioned that about some uh, cash secured puts with Disney and AMC, and but matter of fact. Uh, full disclosure, I closed out my AMC on Friday and just collected premium. I cl- collected the premium and closed it out. And now I'm, we'll just look for more opportunities in the markets. It's crazy because we mentioned at the beginning of the show AMC surging 60% after market close. So basically what that means is I didn't. the good thing is I didn't miss out on anything because when you do a, a strategy like that, 
it's a set dollar amount that you get paid. So even if the stock goes up, let's just say a thousand percent, unfortunately, you don't get that thousand percent. You always are going to get what you've got in that premium. Um, so that wouldn't have affected my position anyway. Uh, but it's pretty cool to see that um, with AMC. I believe the headline was just if you're interested in, in knowing what happened there is oh great i just lost it i had it i had my information from here we go market watch so this is from market watch and it says uh so the current price after the close is at seven dollars and 17 cents up 62.95 percent the the headline was a delaware judge shot down a settlement that would have allowed the movie theater chain to move ahead with a plan to dump more shares into the market, according to reports. So they they wanted to turn the so-called APE or AMC preferred equity, preferred units into common stock. But Delaware Chancellor Court, so-and-so's name, I won't name the name, doesn't matter, rejected an earlier settlement that would have allowed that conversion to move forward. So basically they've been looking for ways to boost its share count and sell more shares. So obviously with AMC just getting hammered for months here ever since uh, 2021 down since 2021 i mean it's probably 95 percent, but let's let's get an exact number here why is why is amc the most volatile stock of of our generation well you know it's one of those things where it's in the news and anytime you get something in the news especially now with with uh social media you can sometimes move things but it brings a lot of risk to the retail investor the public because they just don't know what they're doing so the market actually down from the highs 90 percent so this can be a very volatile stock as as luke's talking about so very risky so you do want to be very careful with the positions that you're you're making in these markets um i mean volatility is also a good thing it's just you want volatility in the strategy we're talking about. Right. Higher volatility equals higher premiums. And quite frankly, the market is not very volatile right now. So there's not a ton of opportunities. So you got to go fishing a little bit. I like to say it, uh, call it uh, fishing for premium. You, you do any fishing, uh, Luke? I try. <laughs> you try? I went deep sea fishing uh, a few months back. That's a blast. Uh, marlin or tuna or what did you catch? Anything? No, uh those yellow snappers oh they taste phenomenal too yeah, don't they they're, they're unreal last and time you you go like a hundred feet down or something and there's so many yeah last time i was in uh i was in riviera maya we went uh fishing and we caught a, a couple snapper and boy they tasted good brought them back to the hotel and they actually cleaned them and cooked them up for us i'm, I'm assuming they gave us the same fish but who knows <laughs> probably not probably not so that being said um any other opportunities this coming week that you're looking at luke uh not necessarily i mean kind of like you said the market's not too volatile right now i'm still waiting uh, i'm i'm still very uh bullish on the market i just gotta wait to be filled on a lot of positions that's a good point um a lot of people think that you need to just be in the market at all times as luke is talking about wait to get in your positions in a demand zone or a supply zone so that way you get your your stocks or whatever that you're buying futures contracts at a discount if you're buying or selling high and waiting for the drop when you're shorting the market so that way it's just not a hope strategy now you have a real strategy that comes from the floors the exchanges and it's it's a risk management strategy and i know you learned that at the same place i did but um you know thanks for coming on the show here today luke and talk a little bit about options and some of the insight on protecting positions like an insurance policy we'll do the same Probably in, the, in a couple of weeks. I know you're you're a busy guy on Saturdays. You got a golf golf tea time today. We'll put it that way. We'll put it that way. So thanks for coming on the show. And and as always, as, as you're in your positions, protect your protect your wins uh, or take your profits when they're given. Protect your losses. And until next time, retire young, my friends.